Unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't think you were that important, but clearly you are. So, that's me. I was the geek of June in South Africa in the Havara calendar, which is my claim to fame this year. Okay, so let's start off. We're going to cover an awful lot, if this thing works. The most scary stat in Africa is that more people have access to cell phones than they actually do pure drinking water, which is a very, very scary stat. And listening to Brett just now, you see the importance of mobile now to all of us. We can't live without it. We're just going to put that in context for Africa specifically. South Africa, there's more SIM cards in South Africa than the entire SA population. There's 45 million plus handsets in this country. It pretty much means that nearly everybody's got one. And every single month, one and a quarter million handsets are sold in South Africa. But in South Africa, we've got a bit of a problem right now. Um, we've got rid of ageism in this country, which has been marvelous. We've got rid of sexism, gone. Racism in South Africa has gone. <laughs> it's not a political presentation. <laughs> There's a bigger scourge in South Africa. Phonism. This is more important than anything else, and I firmly believe that this is a big problem we have here. Here's some pictures of some blatant phonism by agencies and brands in South Africa. They do not care about the smaller phones and the phones that we have. Okay? So just because you as a brand or as an agency or anybody else has an iPhone doesn't mean that all of us have them, okay? So we're going to put it in context. June sales figures for the whole of South Africa, and you'll hear everybody saying how Nokia's on its ass, Blackberry's dead, and all that kind of stuff. These are the important handsets that are being sold right now in South Africa. Nokia is massive here. In North Africa, they're called Nokias, like we call Hoovers, vacuum cleaners, and so on. So basically, Samsung and Nokia own the market here. BlackBerry is a very important smartphone, regardless of what Brett said. And the ZTE is massive as well. That's the 149 Rand USSD and SMS phone. It's not even a mobile web capable phone, not smart in the slightest. But an important one down at the bottom is the importance of iPhone, that we're all pretty hung up on. It's less than 1% here in South Africa. So if you look at the handset market, as it actually stands, that was sales. You see Samsung and Nokia own it, 70%. Smartphone market is four and a half million smartphones in South Africa. Represents about 10 to 11 percent of the entire cell phone population. So to put that in context, the little Samsung E250 here in the middle. Has anybody here got one of these things? Okay, so there's a few. There are five million of those in South Africa. There are more Samsung E250s than there are entire smartphones. So as brands and agencies dealing with web, we need to understand what the South African market's like. So what we're trying to do is now stamp out this smartphone supremacy, essentially, and get it, as a, a get it away from the scourge of South Africa. A few more stats. You may have seen them today. There's 13 million people on the mobile web in South Africa, which is massive, compared to 6 million on the old-fashioned and unimportant web that we used to use. The more important stat there is only a 3 million crossover. So out of those 6 million people on desktop web, only they appear in that 13 million, so you're effectively reaching 10 million more people on the mobile web in South Africa right now. This is a really interesting stat that some of you may have seen. Google search. 25% of all Google searches done in South Africa during the week are from a mobile device. Now, the weekend, that jumps to 65% of Google searches are done from mobile phones. So that shows how important the mobile is to us in South Africa. Right, mobile web data users, when are we using it? The answer to that is we're using it all the time. So they're using mobile data every single hour of the day, except that slight little dip when we're stuffing our faces full of food at dinner time and we literally can't hold our phones. That's the only time there's a dip. But mobile's the, the South African channel now. So just dividing up the digital landscape in South Africa, here you'll see Steak and Accord. With a website, we can reach 6 million people. With a mobile site, we can reach 13 million people. And this fantastic thing called USSD, which is always forgotten about, which is a real powerhouse in South Africa, can reach 50 million people. So as brands and agencies, we, have, we can literally reach everybody with a rich experience in South Africa. So we hear the term Mobi, what the hell is it? We define it as anything that isn't one of these things, a traditional PC. So it's a device that is slightly different to a PC in whatever way it is, but the way that we use it is also different. So it can be anything from the crappiest cell phone, 
up to a smartphone, through to a tablet, to, through to a PSP that people can even browse the web on, means we need to treat it differently. In South Africa, the first consideration for all of us is speed and cost. Most of us are pay-as-you-go, something like 90% of South Africa is pay-as-you-go, so every interaction you have on your mobile phone, unless you use BlackBerry BIS, costs you visible rands and cents, so we've got to keep things small and light and quick. But mobile building is different to the web. And this is a big problem, this is what we're trying to tell people about at the moment. Everybody's suddenly a mobile expert, every web agency is a mobile expert, it's very, very different. So for web, we've only ever had to worry about five web browsers. Mobi comes along, we've got six and a half thousand devices with all sorts of different things going on. Up, down, left, right controls, trackballs, touchpads, and touch. So, most of them will tell you that size, length, and width is not important, okay? With mobile, it really is. So, one size does not fit all on mobile, so when we do a website, we do it a standard size and say, screw the lot of you, this is what you're getting. In mobile, we can't do that. And there's our little friendly Samsung E250 again. So if we design it for that, and then if you're posh, and go, go and view that on your BlackBerry, you won't be able to see anything. Or if you do what most brands do, and assume that everybody here has Blackberries and iPhones, and clearly we don't, and design for that, on your E250, you can't see anything at all. It's absolutely useless. And this is what's happening on the mobile web now. So people take the in-between, um, like this device here, but it's clearly not perfect on either of the other devices. And a very important thing that's always overlooked, there's this new device now that's been out for many years called a touch device. Now the rules change again for a touch device because instead of up, down, left, right, and our track rules, we have to use these big fat things on the end of our hands. So the perfect example here on the left-hand side, you see something like the IOL site. So that's the site that you'd browse for news and weather and what have you. A cup of coffee's in your other hand, and that is a normal-sized thumb, and there's no ways you can click on those news links. It's absolutely ridiculous. So what do you do? You do what we do on the right-hand side here. We just space things out. So we detect this touch phone, we space it out. It's not rocket science, it's just polite. But it's another thing to think about in mobile. So with touch, we do all sorts of different things. Make full areas clickable. Big go buttons so we can get our fat fingers on. Big input areas so we can write things in really, really easily. But again, it's a consideration that nobody does. So when we mobilize the masses and try and mobilize for all the masses and all the smartphones, we start with a, a, a technique called HCA, which is handset content adaptation. It knows what phone you're browsing with, and it does something about it. Most people say they can detect it, but they don't do anything about it. What this system does is looks at your phone, what its capabilities are, and gives the mobile site, especially for your phone. So it means you can deliver perfect experiences regardless of handset. So that's also cool things like streaming videos. This is a gold lurry winner that we did this weekend that we're very proud of with BBDO, which is a simple magazine advert where you just put any kind of phone in the wing mirror of the advert, put in a URL, and it stream a video of a BMW being lost in the distance. And the important thing is, is that it had to work on everybody's phone in South Africa. But with those kind of systems, you can. So in terms of the technology, that was that. But who's the most important in the whole mix of everything? It's you, the user. It's the person at the other end of the phone. So what we try and do also, not only from a handset point of view, but also from a user's point of view, we design for the lowest common denominator. Because some of us are stupid, right? I'm stupid. And some of us, some of us uh, definitely are, because we see what people do on these phones. But we've all got limited mobile experience, and we have to remember that. So we haven't had 10 years on the internet so we can give all complex functions. We need to keep things simple. We're in a country, unfortunately, where we're dealing with lower markets sometimes where there's literacy capabilities. So we don't call buttons submit, we call them go, because submit, people don't know what that is. And then, of course, from a mobile point of view, there's people who want quick information. They're on the go, they're lost, so we need to give them that information fast. And then there's guys like me who want to know every last detail, so we need to make sure that that information is there too. The most important thing in the mobile user is context. So we've been told forever that content is king. Context is most important, and what we mean by that is when we're browsing on our mobile phone, we're doing something different to what we normally would do on the web, right? Perfect example here. 21, well, the font's broken, but 21% of males and 12% of females use their iPads on the loo apparently. But the, but the thing about context with mobile is usually we're not sat down, we're browsing one hand with coffee, we're in a rush to find somewhere, or like Brett says there, we're searching for hotels and doing all sorts of stuff. 
It's different to the internet. So before we determine what we're going to show you on the mobile web, we need to understand what you want and the situation that you're in. So how we design mobile, we equate it to the tiniest desk in the world because you've got a tiny little screen. So we've got to make sure that the most important things are there really, really quickly. So you can get to your cup of coffee, your pack of smokes, and your phone. And how do we demonstrate that? It's something like CompTicket.mobi. Right from the top, you can search straight away so you can get to anywhere. But the next thing are the featured, the featured events. On CompTicket, there's a 70% chance that you'll book one of those. So we're going to put those next. So we're trying to design it so we make it really easy for you and guess exactly what you'll want based on the fact that you're mobile. So from that simple interface that has been mobilized and not just made smaller from CompTicket, CompTicket website you'll see is clutter and glitz and glam absolutely everywhere. That interface for the mobile phone has the same power as the web does, but it's obviously been contextualized for mobile. Now the great thing is, we, we talked about designing for the lowest common denominator for the E250. That doesn't mean that the iPhone guys and the smartphone users can miss out. So I don't know whether any of you guys have been to stayclinical.mobi on a smartphone, or an E250, but you can now book individual seats. But on the smartphones, you get a much bigger experience now, because you get optimized high definition trailers. It geolocates you, so it shows you near a cinema without having, you having to type anything in. You've got pinch and zoom booking, so you can zoom into cinemas and select individual seats on iPhones and Blackberries. And then of course, directional mapping. So when you want to get to the cinema, it's really, really easy. Also, we put other things in at the top up there so you can swipe through the features if you've got a touch phone. It does your nearest cinemas near to you if it's not, if the movie you want is showing, not showing, where you're looking at. So it does all sorts of very, very cool things now. So it's enhancing upwards to the handset so that the richer guys don't miss out. But Moby is a brand touch point. The key thing about Moby, and you'll see that with Stake Clinical just now, it should look great. There's no excuse for, for it to look poor. So here's one that looks really poor. It's a Coca Pops Moby site. I don't know who did it, I don't care who did it, but Kellogg's and, and Coca Pops is awesome. I grew up with it, they did have it that long ago. Um, but it turns the milk chocolatey, it's all, you know, really cool brand. But that has no reflection on their brand, and it should be a brand touch point. A great example of a mobile site that's a brand touch point is Maybelline. Now that's pixel perfect, spot on, you look at that, you look at Maybelline in the shop, you'll tie the two together and it does them justice. The other key thing as well is mobile is not brochureware. You shouldn't do it just for the sake of it. So Kalula, I had a big go at them about their mobile site. Somebody said it was excellent and I said it was shit. And the reason why it's shit is because my relationship with Kalula is to book flights, to check online, do all those kind of things. The Kalula site does absolutely nothing. It tells me what the weather is. I'm mobile, I'll look out the fucking window. It's really, really easy, right? And it shows me how much I'm going to miss my flight by. I can't do anything at all. I can't even click to call because of the way that they've put their cell number means that while I'm in the car on the way to Oliver Tambo, I now need to find a piece of paper and a pen to write down the number, come out of the browser and then dial them. It's utterly ridiculous. I did go and see him. But um, Facebook Mobile, if, if they did it Kalula style, you wouldn't be able to do anything. You'd have to call the call centre to update your status. But you'd need a pen and paper as well to write it down, which is just utterly crazy. We need an application. Spend carefully. So this is the smartphone thing. We see these stats all the time, how important the iPod, iPad and everything else is. We're in South Africa, it's a lot less important. South African market, 200,000 iPhones in South Africa tops. 40% of those are active app users. So there's only 80,000 people who would possibly download your app. And there's only 50,000 tablets in this country at the moment. So it's, it's so insignificant, it's ridiculous. Here's the smartphone sales for South Africa, which is important, because everybody talks about how important Android is, sorry Brett, an iPhone and everything else, BlackBerry are killing it. Followed by Nokia, who are still a massive player in the smartphone market here. Android's only 6%. iPhone's only 4%, but I've, when I speak to any brand, they want an application. They want this first, then this. Not sure why. But the great thing is, is apps also have a use that you can put them in a store and you can get exposure. So we did that, we tried that with the Nokia Obi store. There's so many Nokias everywhere. We thought we'd do a product for Africa. And it works. Entertainment Africa, not Moby. We built a little news app, that's all it is. Put it in the OV store. This holds the record now for a South African app in any store. 400,000 downloads this thing's had, which is far more than any sort of news app or anything of the big players in South Africa. It's absolutely massive. 
So in terms of doing apps, we always recommend it in this order, essentially, which is Nokia OV first, BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, iPad, and then Windows Mobile last, which will come a little bit stronger. In terms of apps, think carefully when you build an app. Don't do it for the sake of it. 20% of apps, only 20% of apps, are used the next day after download. By day 30, it's only 5%, so it's got to be engaging. Don't waste your time. Cover all the bases as well. USSD, the most underused powerhouse in South Africa. You can do very cool experience on this, very limited, but for brands who do lead generation like insurance, all those kind of things, this is a very powerful channel. You can engage your user, and 50 million people in this country know how to use it. This is a Mobi first country. It's as simple as that. You build up to apps and you build down to USD from there. But you need to play where the users play, whether that be Mobi, apps, SMS, and USSD, and understanding your market. But the key thing is, is mobile is for everyone. We can't be phonist. We need to mobilize properly, stamp out the smartphone supremacy. And this is my campaign for it. Campaign for the retaliation against phonism. Unfortunately, it spells crap. But I want everybody to, to join this and, and make sure that we're mobilizing Africa properly. And I've run out of well, well over time. So thank you very much, guys.